This is In Boot Camp, Episode 1, the first week on Saturday, January 19th, 2019, with your hosts, Matthew Petchel and Ryan Rampersad. You can find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash IB1. Hey, Matt. Hey, Ryan. It's your uh, first week of boot camp, right? First week of boot camp is complete. Great. Well, uh, we should talk about that. Uh, indeed, we should. On episode one of IB in boot camp. Very good. So you've had uh, three days of class. Three whole days of class. And I physically made it to the building all three days. That's pretty impressive. And and so, like, I, I don't remember if you told me, but how many, like, how long are those classes? Like, are they all the same length? Or are they different? Ah, uh, they are not. Um, the Tuesdays and Thursdays classes are three hours a crack, and the Saturday is four. So that that's pretty good. Um, so it's about 10 hours a week. Yes. And, and there's breaks. It's, it's like, so we had a lunch break, and, um, yeah. oh, because it's 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock, and that is sure. prime Lunching, lunching. yes, prime lunching. So uh, you had two two regular class days, so that would have been your Tuesday and Thursday class. Yep, got to so, meet my so, new professor. It was fantastic. So you have a professor. So can you tell me anything about your professor? Uh, my professor works on a React team for lead pages. He um, has been doing this for about five ish years. Um, super fun, easygoing guy. Uh, makes me laugh. Enjoys Dragon Ball Z. And Avatar Airbender stuff, which I never got into and know nothing about. That's all so I know about him. So he's not a University of Minnesota professor, though. No, no, he is not. Um, and which I am a okay with. Uh, yeah, I think that's that's interesting because uh, U of M professors typically don't have a lot of hands-on. You know, I mean, this latest, guy works in the field for this company. Latest, greatest. Uh, what do you call it? Like industry yeah. experience, but working in the field as your as your he's industry guy now. Yes, he's in the industry now, which is always very helpful and actually relevant to learning about that. And I have two TAs in my class, and both of them are also employed at some spot. I have no specifics. That's okay. So uh, we have a list of show notes here, and so we'll just talk talk about some of the stuff that we've uh, you know thought about during the week. So, so tell me about um, your classmates. So, you are um, probably in a class of about thirty people. Correct. Um, th- there is a Monday Wednesday course, and there's also a Tuesday Thursday course. I hope I said that right. That sounds um, right. That sounds correct. But each one has thirty, and 30. on Saturday we all get smushed together to make sixty. Smushed. That's, that's, that's how. Yeah. Sounds well. Good. When everyone has a device and everyone's got to have their thing a plugged in yeah. and everyone's got a phone and a tablet out, it um, it gets crowded. It can add up for sure. Yeah. So tell me about your classmates. So are, were, were they what you expected? I mean, were they... Um, I couldn't believe how diverse it is. Um, pretty diverse. We have stuff that's... We got people, I would say, about like 20 years old and we got people that are easily 70. Wow, that's, and, is that true? Oh, yeah. And guess who's having the most trouble with this course so far? The people who are 20. Uh, no, no. The uh, 70-year-old people that aren't people for much longer. Um, they're, they're, they're old. I, um, I feel, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Yes. Yeah, it, it can be hard to uh, jump into a new industry like that. Um, so did you expect, um, you know, the computer skills to be higher on average or... Were they uh, kind of what you were thinking? Well, so as we talked about in episode zero, if anyone watched that in a listening way, um, there was some pre-work that was to be done before class. And I would expect that everyone in that class, even if they didn't do it, would have a kind of an understanding of that. But um, turns out, no. Um, everyone's and, and, got a complete background. Like, and everyone... Can you give us a reminder of what that pre-work was? Was it like uh, writing oh. a couple of HTML snippets or something yeah, like that? Yeah, and it was just having VS Code on your computer before you walked in. It was having a GitHub account created. Uh, it was just, just installing basic stuff. They so wanted everyone to have based. Chrome. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it, they the directions were oversimplified. Uh, even for things like creating your SSH keys and stuff, they had screenshots of every step along the way, and you couldn't screw it up. Right. If you put the time in, which I'm guessing these people did not, didn't. Yeah, that that can certainly happen, and that's it's always tough to um, you know, to get to that point. 
and um huge diversity in hardware everyone's got stuff nobody has the same stuff um and a lot of people like oversized gaming laptops i found out that is really interesting, and you, you talked to me about this, and I, I thought that was amusing because uh, one of our friends, one of my friends from uh, the U of M when I went there, Sam, he also had a, not a big gaming laptop. Oh, so it's like it a was like a little 13-inch Alienware. But it was certainly a gaming laptop in its small capacity. Um, and, and so when you're when you're in college, I, ca- I guess it could make sense that your laptop and your desktop are the same computer because you don't have a lot of space in a dorm room. But... I guess the people who are interested in playing a lot of games might also be interested in getting into uh, software engineering too. So that makes sense, but it's also funny. So you've used laptops now for well over a decade. You've seen them. You know what they look like. This guy had a laptop. When the lid was flipped open, it it looked like a stop sign. Like there was just so many angles and other things. It wasn't a square. It wasn't rectangular. It was a... looked like a stop sign. Well, it just... (sighs) Or like two trapezoids melded together inversely, and it just, there's white, like you could see space in between where you'd expect, you know, solidness. Like there's light passing through. Um, yep. Gotta it was, increase that airflow for those gaming laptops. It's just, it's just to look ridiculous. Um, <laughs> like most people like to have very thin or no bezel at all on their things. Like they don't want a huge border around their stuff. Like, I mean, yeah, on the top for your webcam and mic, you're going to need one. But on the sides... Yeah, Just... you don't need one so much. So th- that brings up an interesting question. So you bought a laptop for your class. I sure did. And how many others do you think also did the same? Or do you think most people just had brought in whatever they had? Uh, my new bestest buddy, Dennis, had to buy a laptop right before this. And he was hoping he could, um, you know, bring his desktop in. Yeah, probably yeah, not. I'm advised. not the only one. Like, I told him about how I put handles on my last one. He's like, yeah, you know, I, I want to do that too. It's a solution, it, it... man. It is a solution, but it's also monstrously inconvenient. Yes. Um, yes. And um, he bought a laptop right before, um, in person, at a Best Buy. And the laptop they handed him was a brick on arrival. It was completely dead. Couldn't boot, couldn't do anything. And so to make it up to him and to keep his business, Best Buy gave him some kind of MacBook. I don't know the exact specs. But that sounds like a wonderful upgrade and extraordinarily productive. Not sure how he weaseled his way into that, but that sounds amazing. I have no idea either. All I know is he said he didn't want it. He asked, he, they insisted on that because they didn't have another one of what he wanted. And he had never used the, what version are they even on now? Uh, I don't know. I, don't you have I don't... like two of those MacBook? pros i do and they're both on the latest version of whatever it is now i think it's 1013 or 1014 it doesn't have some not cat name but some like national park yeah it's, thing. it's 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 mojave as in the mojave, mojave desert okay. but i i don't know what number it is because i i often forget it is uh according to the google search i just did here on wikipedia it is 10.14 okay but uh so he had to get all familiar with mac land stuff and so there's certainly a learning curve there, but it is well worth that learning curve to be more productive while actually getting work done. Um, but that also brings up another good point. So you had Windows on your laptop. I sure did. And we and, alluded uh, to the fact that you did not have Windows on your laptop on our last episode. So I do you out. still Do you still have Windows on your laptop? I still have Windows on it. While I was in class, it wanted me to update, and I'm not kidding. And <laughs> it's just... Um, I'd rather be using you want to. And and so will you go back? Not yet. But yeah, so you're someday gonna give it a while. I will. Um okay. I am trying not to start trouble. I am trying to have everyone on the same page because I I don't want to say I know what I'm doing, but in my table of cohorts they ask me questions and I want to be able to tell them exactly what I'm doing because not all the things are technical questions. Like some of them are just like, well, how do you do this? Like it's just, right. Yeah. Yeah. So like a button might be in a different place or menus might be different. And so it makes sense to be all kind of on the same page. Exactly. If everyone has the same set of tools, everyone's using Chrome, everyone's doing the exact same um, thing. It's yep. great. That's good. That's good. Good perspective on that. So you mentioned you have a group of people. So how big is your group, and like, what does that look like? Uh, 
we were told to find little groups of people who were um, living close to us and stuff. Well, we never did that. We just picked the four closest people. Yes. Uh, so they were, we're living, all over the they metro. They were the most near living beings next to you. Yes. Like, are we going to meet up outside of class? No. The University of Minnesota's campus is sprawling. There are cows. It's so big. There's horses. Uh, we could literally meet up on campus anywhere to do that. So we uh, thought it was kind of silly will, to... I will mention there were there are physically cows at yes, that they're, campus. They're, they're across the street from where In I winter, was at. Outside. I mean, there's, what, four cornfields, too? Yeah, at that campus, that is true. Yeah. So... Yeah, you know, it's the uh, St. Paul campus of the University of Minnesota has a huge agricultural and raptors and birds presence. Yes. Um and so you you were uh, talking to some of your teammates now and um Could, very diverse background all of them. Mm-hmm. One of them is a computer science graduate at Gustavison wherever I uh, it's, uh, it's somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. Uh, but he's been he's graduated for two years now. He's got his degree, and he has been unable to find a job. And that was so a he what, decided. Well, what degree? In computer science. Oh, computer science. Okay, computer science. So to his two year two year old graduate, unable to find. Well, you know, I mean, he, uh, he works uh, in food services now, but it, uh, a job in in the industry his field. Yeah, and and, and um, so there's you know it's it's not always easy to get from college to industry work if you yeah. don't take some time while in college to learn a little bit about how to participate in the industry so you know a lot well, of our um a lot of our schooling was geared towards you should be taking a you know your class load but then also ha- fi- try to find an internship so you can get some real world experience before you do graduate yeah it, he claims that um very few people are looking for java developers and that his computer science course was very very heavily into the java and um i can attest that uh that's probably true uh his courses were probably in java as were some of mine and the industry is very much so still looking for java developers everywhere all the time in the pre-work we had to find um like just look for what employers are wanting and yeah. there was a, quite a few people who were looking for Java stuff. In some capacity. Yeah. Yep. So Java in the industry right now, and I can give I can give you some good details on that. Um, you know, big big Fortune five hundred companies and even probably some smaller, you know, Fortune one thousand companies, and even smaller than that. I mean, you know, anywhere can use Java. Um, you know, there's some great frameworks out there for Java, making APIs, making um you know, really complex integrated systems. You probably aren't making games. You're probably not making you know, like things like that. that. One Minecraft game that everyone talks about. That might not even be in Java anymore, anymore since Microsoft yeah. bought it. Um, you know, Java opens the door to making Android apps. Um, it opens the door to a lot of you know real important work in a lot of industries. Uh, Java is pretty ubiquitous, as you know. Um, while they claim that it's on like six billion devices, that's not where it matters. I mean, it's probably more true now with actually running on Android. So Java's pretty pretty prevalent out there. Yeah, and imagine at the end of this, he'll have his coding boot camp superstar certificate, his computer science degree, and he'll be all ready to hit the job market. Yep, and it, and it really depends on you know what what you make out of it. Well, uh, the computer science degrees are you know kind of hit or miss on how much relevance they actually uh provide to industry work i would say uh at least initially um you know as you start getting into more of an architecture role or a systems engineering role those computer science you know concepts aren't particularly important i would say well i'm just hoping he can get a job and he can purchase a new laptop that is passively cooled it doesn't oh, have the most <laughs> annoying fan in the world. So, so not a not a game two hundred. Yeah. yeah, yeah, not not so bad. Um, but so his gaming laptop looks cooler than the other person's. But I did hear his fan all day long. Yeah, So the the coolest fan is the one you can't hear. Indeed. Um. So you uh, are in a little group. So what kind of group projects do you have? Well, is it that a mystery? 
Uh, it is. is. It is a is total a mystery? mystery. There is no oh. working ahead. There is no cheating. There's no that. Uh, it's just that we're supposed to share everything with our group. All in-class activities we have done so far, and we've done about 15 of them now, mm-hmm. um, have all been, you can blatantly copy. Like, I would post my answers in Slack. Um, it's just, it doesn't matter. It's just as long as everyone understands the proof of concept. Like, you, you, if you don't even have it running on your, it's not like they go around and check. It's right. These in-class activities are solely to help you learn the material. So, but is there homework then that they do check? Yes. Um, on the 29th, 10 days from today as of recording, we have our first homework due, and it is to make a little bio page for ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it helps the teacher get to know who you are, your ambitions, and everything else, and what you want to do, because as many of a different... Everyone wants something else out of this. Um, yep. And... I mean, some people are just doing it just to take it, which is really expensive. It is. And on the other hand, I mean, if people can do it, that's great. And if they're interested, even better. Yeah. Um, so it's um, it's going to be fun. So that sounds like a great uh, first couple of days. Uh, and so you had your weekend class, your Saturday afternoon, morning afternoon class. It's kind of weird. And um, that was not the highlight of the week. Not the highlight of your week. So yeah. Uh, so tell tell me about that in in some short brief terms. Well, um, I work at the post office full time. I deliver my route, and then then I go home and hang out for a couple hours, and then I go to class. It works really well for me because during the, the two week. hours, yeah, during the week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I go home, I walk the dog. I mean, who doesn't feel relaxed after a good dog walking? Exactly. Um, totally have, have a chicken patty sandwich and um, ready to go to class. But today, I had to go to work, leave work for five hours, come back to work, and it doesn't sound too bad. But I couldn't settle down. I couldn't get focused when I got to class because I had a lot of mail waiting for me when I got back. Cause, um, right, so is that... When uh, you get that dangerous preview of the day and just know that, yes, on top of all my mail, the city of New Brighton sent out a magazine to everyone that has to be worked in as a third bloody bundle, and you just know that that's just waiting for you. And it's... Well, well, today's high was like, what, eight degrees? Yeah, pretty and, close. And in, in the wind, it was like minus one. Yeah. Um, just, it just it didn't leave... Um, didn't leave a, me in happiness. Yeah, so it, it it's 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 really tough to go to class when you when you're thinking about other things, of course. So I can totally understand that, and especially when you're dreading going back to those other things afterwards. Well, it's cold. The sun's going to be setting soon, and yeah, yeah, it wasn't fun. And so you were with sixty other people today, or fifty nine others, whatever. So how did that go? How was it being in a big class like that? Was the room different? Was it packed? The, the room was packed. I want to say there's even more TAs. The other cohort seems to have like four TAs, and we have two. There's plenty of people going around uh, if you had questions, and there's mm-hmm. always your peers to ask, and you can always just Google stuff. And, and you can just use Slack, too, so yeah. there's plenty of options. And um, Yeah, so it's very project-based, and I love it. Mm-hmm. Um, so he would talk for like 20 minutes and we do some kind of exercise for 10 and then not get it done and then feel very frustrated that you don't know how to float stuff. And yeah, and we'll, we'll talk about some today. course content here in a minute. So I really like the idea of this little, uh, you know, lecture and then exercise pattern, uh, especially in a long lecture, you know, in uh, a four long, hours, it, you can't sit for four hours in four hours. You would go insane if you were in a lecture that, that, that linear. So it's really nice that you get that time. Yeah. Um so uh so these these past few days I know that, that you know it was kind of like onboarding introduction kind of stuff, but you've also been doing some HTML work and some now uh CSS with some floats. Uh yes I have. And so okay. you 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 have experimented with floats a little bit at this point and what is your determination should you use floats in 2019? Well, I know that it's a trap question and you want me to say no, but right now I would say yes, because that's what I know. That's what I've done a little bit of today and I don't know better yet. And you're going to say, oh, you will know better soon enough. 
Yes, exactly. You will know better soon enough, and I can't believe you can see through my trap questions. Yes. It's almost like mm. I've met you before. Oh, darn. I cannot let that happen again. Yeah. But um, no, um, so it's I, uh, been a lot of fun. That's good. I'm glad you're having fun there. And um, what do you know what's coming up for week two or anything, maybe? Not really, except for um, Martin Luther King Day has gotten rid of my Tuesday class. Oh, so you've already ha- missed a day or lost a day, I guess. We are going to be losing a day for next week. And and so the uh, is there a reason for that? Yes. Um, they want to keep the Monday-Wednesday people on the same pace as the Tuesday-Thursday people. Okay. And Monday is the holiday in observance of Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Uh, there will be no class. Right. So they, they're trying to keep the uh, class days equal. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I have told Matt for many years when I was at the U of M that uh, if you were on a Monday lab, you would get screwed because you would always be one week behind every other lab and it was awful. Yeah. Yeah. And also, so, there's a midterm today. Oh, was there a midterm today? <laughs> yeah. Uh, good old fashioned midterm jokes. But, well, we did have a little quiz. So, we take these quizzes that they say are for the instructors to figure out their stuff. Because the first night we had a little um, Git fiasco. Like, people weren't doing very well, um, making, touching files, making stuff, and moving around. And so, they mm-hmm. had a little quiz to take today. And. Um, it didn't say explicitly not to cheat, and so I. You know, it's a group. I quiz. figured it was open. Well, I figured it was open book. Oh, okay, that's fine. And do you want to know the worst part? I only got ninety five percent on it, and I thought I had to look up one answer. Oh, you know, it, I, it, I screwed something up. It happens. You know, Git Git is a, an incredibly useful tool. Some it of its just commands terminal are, commands and other stuff. Some of some of its commands are arcane and uh, inconsistent. And you can get into situations where things just don't make sense anymore, and you just need to fail and start over. There's nothing wrong with looking it up and copying and pasting stuff in. Um, well, I mean, looking it, it up is okay. Me? Pasting well, could be dangerous sometimes, especially oh. if, I don't know, you have no idea what the code does. Like, I don't know, get reset hard. You know, that could be pretty bad. But you won't know till you try. You won't know you nuked your entire code base until you try. You can roll back. Uh, you can't. You cannot roll back a uh, a reset hard. Like, like actually, like, like actually, a- you cannot roll back a reset hard. Hmm. Uh, I can tell you a story about that in the fringe, which you should listen to. Uh, which I believe you have to uh, go through the uh, Patreon to do so. So, if you're interested in hearing about uh, even further stories, you should uh, head over to our Patreon. Um, but, uh, before we conclude, I also wanted to mention some stuff that I've been working on. Um, so at work, we're kind of doing this, uh, little boot camp of our own, which is pretty cool. So I won't talk too much about that, but one of the things that I found out is that some of our, uh, folks that we just hired actually came from your same boot camp. Like exact same, correct? Yes, exact same. So it was the six month part-time U of M boot camp. And how do you feel like they're ready for the market? So, you know, it's um, you know, it's interesting. So I was talking to them for a little bit and um, you know, I I think they're ready for the market. The boot camp uh is what you make of it from what I you know, when we talked, you know, that's kind of what they said. And they really enjoyed taking the longer one, the the 6-month part-time one because they actually had time, time to, to think and stuff. Exactly. Yeah. They really like that. They thought that you know, towards the end, and they were also, you know, at the same time working on their final project that they were kind of getting kind of the it wasn't burnout per se, but it, they were getting, you know, burdened with one pro the, the final project over classwork. So the attention was focused elsewhere. Uh. Um, and so for us, we're a Doherty, he- uh, Doherty heavy, we're a Java heavy business at Doherty. And so because of that, I felt, um, I felt like some of the Java skills might not be up to speed now, but that's okay. Um, you know, if you if you weren't paying attention then, I mean, that's I mean, it's just something you'll learn if you learn JavaScript pretty well. I mean, and you're pretty safe with those things. Learning Java on top of that probably isn't a 
a huge and insurmountable task, especially when you start working on something and you can see examples that actually work and function. And the boot camp isn't supposed to be the, I'm going to make you the super architect guy. It's just to get you in the door and into the industry for as little money as possible. Exactly. Because and going I, to school is so expensive. Exactly. When I, and I say 11 that's... grand, in the scheme of things, that's not a whole ton. Because what would you end up paying for your five years at the U? Just, just, just multiply by five. Oh, my price by five. Okay, yeah. that's expensive. It, I mean, it is, but my program was for four years, so I mean, that's how much it should cost. Um, that does not include, however, uh, living expenses and phone purchases and computer expenses and computer purchases. But, but that's okay. It doesn't have to. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but I think it's really interesting that the boot camp um uh, is pretty well received. I mean, it it's certainly hireable. Um, but, but I'll stress what I've stressed before. It's, it's what you make of it. So if you go in and you're eager to participate and learn and think, and you are aware of what you don't know and slightly aware of what you don't know that you don't know, uh, that can make or break you in getting positions. I think, um, you don't know everything. That's okay. Um, if you can say and articulate what you do know pretty well and say what you probably haven't had exposure to pretty well, I think that puts you in a really good position. Um, this is your first week. There's uh, 23 more weeks to go and know stuff, and that's that's the, that's the what you're going to do. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to these 23 weeks. Yep. All right. Uh, is that all for the day? That's all for the day. So, uh, you know, as is customary, where can we find you on the internet? Oh, you can find me at Matthew Petrel on the GitHub. That's where I'm going to be posting a lot of my stuff. You know, we need to get you a blog or something. Uh, that's, I don't have a blog. Yeah, you know, that's okay. We can, we can work on that. Uh, it could just be like a markdown file on GitHub. That'd be, that'd be okay. I'd be okay with that. Uh, and of course you can find me just about everywhere but especially on the Twitter at Ryan Amar and of course on my website RyanRampersad.com and of course this is in boot camp and we have a few things for you to know about such as our Patreon which is something you can find and support us on at uh, patreon.com slash the Nexus TV and of course you can find us on Reddit which is kind of acting as our comment section these days so you can do that at reddit.com slash r slash the Nexus TV which is great because you can tell Matt all about how to use floats in the real world. They're 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 tricky and you too will soon get your clear fix. Um and that's pretty much it for this episode of In Boot Camp. Have a good one. Have a good one. The Nexus, the Nexus, the Nexus TV podcasts from, from the, the technological, technological convergence. convergence.